Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1327. 1327. It's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today, Madame Rita Bega, Valentina, Bison Bentley, and we get to the segment, Why the Hell Did I Yelp That? Where we'll look at some things that I yelped about that have no help. Mike's Daily Podcast. No help to you. They don't help you in any way. But we'll also get to some interesting new stuff. Mike's Daily Podcast. Going on today. Well, that was a weekend that had the best freaking weather in the Bay Area. It couldn't get better. Oh, wait. Now we're gonna get some rain. What the hey? It's so bizarre to have all this water rain falling down constantly here. Mike's Daily Podcast. The hills are getting so green. They are so green, and they're usually turning brown around this time of year. Mike's So that's happening Daily in the Bay Area. Podcast. For your information. Yeah. If you didn't know. I want to tell you something. I was listening to a podcast from Minnesota. MPR is what they call it. And there's this girl, Carrie Miller, and she hosts this roundtable discussion at the end of the week. And they were discussing Prince, because Prince is from Minnesota, and he has been gone for, for a year now. And I am so going to sneeze. Look who just walked in. Hello, my camera, so it's Madame Ruta Bega. If you sneeze, point your nose that direction over there. I will. I will <clears throat> projectile my nose sweat that way. Oh, What I was going to say, though, is... One of the people, the, the panel that was discussing Prince, the Prince panel, look who else walked in. Hello, Mike. This is Valentino, the Bracing Attendant. And it's Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we heard that you was on the radio this past weekend there. Yeah, and the radio. They're here. Was that for us? Yeah, you're here, and it's scary, and we're all frightened. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, Dave. That's all right. Do you know that? Well, what happened was I was on Country Crossroads Radio Saturday and Sunday, which I've been on for over two years now, I think, and it has been a lot of fun. But first... And here's today's podcast picture. The podcast picture is so great. Boy, is this great. It's wonderful. Look at it. It is from... Podcastro Valley, there is a wonderful coffee place there where they serve such good coffee. When the coffee's first rate, so is everything else. Would you like some coffee? And they have uh, this wonderful t- lobby. It's actually in the lobby of a church. And they serve this Verve coffee, which is dang good because it's from Santa Cruz and I don't know what they put in it. It makes it so delicious. But they... Maybe it's because it comes out of a donkey. But it's wonderful coffee. It's donkey coffee. No, I don't know what kind. But uh, I've sat at the in this lobby of this church and talked to different people, including the daughter of the main preacher of this church, which was interesting one time I was speaking with her and then uh, some other people. It's a great place. Go check it out, I guess is what I'm saying. Or not. But it's a... Oh, the other cool thing is... When you walk out the door of this lobby, you've got this beautiful view of the Bay Area. It's so nice. I got caught up. Well, not really. I watched the first two episodes, then I watched the last two episodes of Cowboy Bebop. I watched other episodes randomly throughout the late 90s and early O's on the Cartoon Network. That's where they used to show it on Adult Swim. And I I was... uh, Eh, you know, I was impressed with the the animation. It is anime done in Japan, and maybe in the future uh, I will get to speak with one Jarell for Jarell Name. Jarell Name. And he and I could possibly talk more extensively about. 
Cowboy Bebop, but I was more fascinated as I watched the... has a very tragic ending. I was very impressed with that. But the voiceover actors, you know, because it's already voiced in Japan, and then they get the video here in America, and then they have to put the American English voice over onto it. And hopefully it doesn't sound like this. I can't believe... What the hell is this place anyway? That was actually a voiceover for a game that was originally done, I think, was it in Japan? But this is uh, amazing to watch because these guys... I mean, my voice is... I know is amazing. Thank you. I know it's probably the best voice you have ever heard. It's... Thank you. It's so good, my voice. But these guys... Oh, the... They have such... These gravelly red voices. And the thing is, when they're talking just normally, they still have this voice. When I worked on Cowboy Bebop, they still got that voice. And the women, uh, what the, I, I can't think of all the characters right now. Anyway, Cafe Anyway, it was a fascinating thing to watch the behind the scenes. Of, anyway. Yes. Anyway. About Cowboy Bebop. And about how they still get all the time people go when they hear their voice they're like hey were you so and so from cowboy bebop and they're like yeah and they're like oh that was an awesome anime it was sort of the gateway anime for a lot of people to watch more anime and those voice actors went on to bigger and better i don't know if better but bigger uh anime more well-known anime stuff that was that's now all this anime is being turned into movies or Netflix TV shows, live action shows, live action movies. At any rate, we can get into that more with Jarell Namay at some point in the future. But I did want to point out this Prince thing. And one of the writers on the panel pointed out that Prince often wrote from the point of view or wrote about. Uh, he was, how did they put it? And I was like, oh, that's so true. He often wrote about strong women and how they were affecting him in some way. Like, you know, baby, you're just like my mother. She's never satisfied. Or the raspberry beret. I walked into the store and, you know, talking all about this woman who rocked his world in a barn. Or, you know, uh, darling little Nikki. Isn't that the song about the he goes to see a prostitute? Or uh, even uh, Little Red Corvette about it's all this point of view of him. I suppose perhaps he's losing his virginity in this car. I think that's what it's about. I don't remember, but I do remember Stevie Nicks stole the chord progression. She even admitted to this and said, you know, Stand Back was inspired, she said, by Little Red Corvette and a drive she was taking from Los Angeles up to Santa Barbara, which is a a beautiful drive if you have never done it. I used to live in Ventura, which is on that you pass through as you're driving up from L.A. up to Santa Barbara. So all these different songs that Prince wrote often had a very strong female lead in there somewhere that was affecting him in some way, and it created some great music. So, and then he was also behind several large uh, famous women... Or he helped their careers, I guess, like Sheila E., Sheena Easton, um, was it Apollonia? Uh, in in uh, Misty Copeland in recent years, the ballerina. And he was even trying to help out Zoe Deschanel a little bit. They did a song together that was featured in an episode of New Girl. At any rate, I think that was an interesting perspective of, of Prince's stuff. And some of his more famous work had a very strong woman in the song somehow. And then, and then just, I thought about it, you know, and it still baffles me. I can't believe he passed away alone in an elevator. And that song, Let's Go Crazy, and nothing's going to let the elevator take us down. Let's go crazy. And, and when the elevator tries to bring you down, go crazy was what he said in that song. And anyway cafe anyway i could go on and on about anyway i was listening to a past podcast i did uh because i've recently on mike's daily podcast.com organized a bunch of the interviews uh alphabetically i'm all the way up to j now i had a lot of time this weekend because i was working at my other job my other radio station i work for and i got through j and one of the 
artist that I listened to was someone named Idea the Artist. That's what she calls herself. And she, I was listening back to that interview, and she's so beautiful and so fascinating, and her music's so interesting. She's got this really, like, her voice is, I, the way I would describe it is operatic. Like, you could hear her probably on Broadway doing a musical. But it reminded me of Carly Simon, Tori Amos, some, something like that, if you are familiar with those artists. And just interesting talking to her, how she grew up in Buellton, which is just north of Santa Barbara, all these places in California. Uh, but I was listening to that interview, and I was talking about a, a musical group of some kind or a band. And this was back four years ago. And I guess the podcast hasn't changed much because there I am talking about music again. But that's where I come from. I came from the music world of radio. So I'm going to have a lot of that in my talk radio style. And I hope you enjoy it. I know when Haley was on the show a lot, we would talk a lot about music because Haley is a very musical person. So if you are a musical person, if you would like to sing for me on the phone, leave a message at 336-MM-DAILY. You could do that. You could be kind of like a, they might be giants. They used to do that. They'd make songs, and you could call into their answering machine, and and then you would hear their new song. Three three six mm daily, uh, and you can check out the website and see how far I have gone as far as all the interviews that I have now alphabetized. I've gone through J. And there's uh, many artists there, musicians, and in some people like I talked to the Jelly Belly Factory. In Vacaville, I talked to the guy, or the Fairfield, uh, talked to the guy that runs it there. And there's some other cool interviews there. Check that out at mikesdailypodcast.com. You can help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy. And that helps us out. And there's also a PayPal there. You'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. And you'll see all the past podcast pictures at mikesdailypodcast.com. Now, the segment called... The hell did I yelp that? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I yelp. And I don't yelp that much anymore. I do like yelp in that I can go on and what do you do? You check in or something and you got to leave like a little comment and then you'll get like a little discount on stuff. And then I thought to myself, well, why am I yelping when I could talk about it on my podcast? And, and, then I thought to myself, this will be a great name for a segment. And then I thought, yeah, why did I ta- call it this name when I wanted to call it about something to do with news? Because we're talking about news in this segment is what I'm trying to tell you. So this segment, why the hell did I yelp that should be called the news segment. And here we go with the news segment. First, starting off with the Daily Beast and someone that I mentioned in a recent podcast that I had met at UCSB years ago when he was just getting started. And now he's having some issues a la Bill O'Reilly. And Allah is French. No, wait, it's Muslim. No, it's... And France has got that election. And I still don't quite understand what happened with the election there yesterday, but we won't get into that today, even though this is a news segment. Because I know, I know you'll be hearing about it all day today but let's talk about this sean hannity is the latest fox news personality facing allegations of sexual harassment during a friday interview with tulsa oklahoma based radio host pat campbell former fox news contributor debbie schlusel accused hannity of inviting her to his hotel room before and after a debate with a pro-palestinian guest in detroit schlusel said Schlüssel is key in German. Did you know that? No, wait. Is it street? No, that's Strasse. Schlüssel. Yeah, that's key. I got about this much, and I'm making a very small hand gesture, like you know, this little bit of uh, German instruction from my mom, and then took a German class in Ventura, California. And from what I remember, that was key. Anyway, Schlüssel said she rejected Hannity's alleged advances. And then she was never invited on his show again. Schlussel and Hannity were scheduled to speak together at the Detroit show 
Schussel said, but before the show, Hannity allegedly invited her to an event at a nearby bookstore. He had some event at a bookstore where he signed his book for people standing in line. He asked me to come meet him at his book signing. So I met him there. It was very awkward. He had me up there with him while he signed books, and I felt very weird. These people don't know me, and they don't come for me to sign their books. Then I left to get ready for the show, and he said, Why don't you come back with me to my hotel? And I said, No, I have to get ready for the show. Shortly before the show, Hannity allegedly told Schlussel they would team up against another panelist, but Schlussel told Campbell that the move was a head fake against her. Hmm? She said, Sean came up to me and said, we're going to double team, which was a weird phrase to use, she said, this Palestinian guy that I was up against on the show, and then every time I tried to open up my mouth and say something, they yelled at me and said, obey your host, you can't say anything or else we're going to shut off your microphone. After the show, Shalusal claims Hannity made another advance on her My dad and my brother were there in the green room, she said, claiming that Hannity tried to get me to go back with him to the hotel after the show. And then she claimed uh, she rejected the offer a second time and then was not invited on any future Hannity programs, according to the Daily Beast. Hmm. Well, what the heck there, huh? Well, we'll see. Now, it's interesting because I know I've listened to Hannity's show and with people like the guy that ran for vice president with John Kerry, was it Edwards? And then he had this affair, uh, uh, affair that came out and Sean Hannity railed against him because he was a Democrat. This Edwards guy and said, oh my gosh, how could he cheat on his wife? And then that would be very hypocritical. If that were true and Sean Hannity made this advance on this woman, but hypocritical. When it comes to tires, though, there are generally three things to consider. Size, tread life, and tire pressure. Oh, that last story from the Daily Beast. This from The Drive about airless tires. They're not new. In fact, it was Michelin who first introduced them over a decade ago. They're called Tweel Tires, currently sold commercially for lawnmowers and golf carts. What makes Bridgestone's approach different then is two things, its unique design and its application. Michelin's Tweel design consists of flexible polyurethane spokes which support the inner rim. Bridgestone's design differs in that it replaces the inner tube and a portion of the wheel spokes with thermoplastic resin supports. This has been a long time in the making for the world's largest tire manufacturer. Bridgestone originally revealed their airless tire concept in 2011, followed by a second generation two years after that. Now it says it's finally ready for mass market, but there's a catch. It, catch it's not for your car. Uh, it won't be ready for another two years. I guess it's for your bike. Bicycles are what they're starting off with. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Bridgestone claims a reduction in carbon dioxide emission thanks to rolling resistance being virtually non-existent. These tires, which are made from recyclable materials, are better for the environment. Now, maybe that's a ways off for your car, and this might be a ways off for your car too. Flying cars. Uh, This, according to USA Today, airborne cars escaping from traffic and, you know... The whole Jetsons thing. Dutch startup startup Pal V announced last week that it was taking $10,000 deposits for its $400,000 and up two-seat Liberty flying car, which Slovakia-based Aeromobile began doing the same for its $1 million plus machine due out in three years. Both models would require a runway and a pilot's license. So you need both of those. So not exactly something everyone would have, but I guess in the future, we would then try to get not only a driver's license, but a pilot's license simultaneously. There are other big players, including a Massachusetts-based Terrafugia, whose XF-T looks like a car with wings folded by its side and can take off and land vertically using so-called VTOL technology. 
The company site claims that flying an XF-T won't require a full pilot's license. That's the same approach taken by Germany's Lilium Aviation, which just conducted a successful unmanned test flight of its VTOL craft with wheels. And ride-hailing giant Uber, whose ambition, ambitious push into self-driving cars is entangled in a lawsuit with rival Google, also envisions a world where your Uber ride can skip the downtown gridlock by taking to the skies. On Tuesday, Uber will host an Elevate conference in Dallas on that idea. From the looks of these big technological leaps, it would appear that hopping a flight to the office is but a few years away. Uh, Generally speaking, though, technology is outstripping not just existing regulations, but the speed with which government regulations can rule on new regulations that ensure new technology is safe and organized, says the executive publisher of Cox Automotive, which includes Kelly Blue Book. The Department of Transportation is still trying to iron out rules for autonomous car companies. And now you'd have a machine that operates in yet another dimension of space. These are just regulations questions. They're just regulations questions all over the place as we go outside a cafe anyway. We're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Well, we'll see what becomes of that. This article on USA Today also discusses Elon Musk. And, you know, he's all into SpaceX and flying. And then he's got the electric cars with Tesla. So who knows what he might be doing with it as well. I'm fine with being on the ground for now. I know that the sky is is wide open. But when you get a little closer to Earth, you got these little things called buildings. And, you know, that's dangerous. Next show, I want to just sleep. While the microphone is on and That'll be a fun show won't it Or maybe it won't Whatever So take your raspberry beret And and take your Pop life And take your Little red corvette And enjoy your day Whether it be full of rain Like mine is possibly going to be or not Because Life is short and all you got is one chance to make it to the above the ground. Which I don't know where I'm going with this. Thanks for listening. Next show, Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.